welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to delve into a very exciting open source project called CinePy. This allows us to build a cinema camera using a Raspberry Pi, a sensor, this touchscreen and a few other components. So let's go and get started. Right, here we have the key components we're going to use to build our CinePy cinema camera, although before we begin I think it's worth noting what a cinema camera actually is. And whilst there are many definitions, they all basically refer to a camera that's designed for shooting video, which records high resolution, high data rate footage, that offers extensive manual control, and which has a mount for interchangeable lenses. CinePy has been developed by Sharba Naj, I hope I've got that pronounced right, and if we take a look at its web page, we find links to lots of different places where resources are available. These include a YouTube channel where we can find various sample footage, including a great video of undersea creatures shot with a CinePy camera, and there's also a video here that shows us what a final camera can look like. And if we want the particular files for making that particular camera case, they're available here on Thingiverse. Although in this video, I intend to make something rough and functional via other means, just so we can test things out with a location shoot. As you may expect, CinePy resources are available on GitHub, and already there are two versions available, CinePy version 2 and CinePy XL. The latter uses a larger, specially developed sensor and is a more expensive build. And so here I'm going to put together a CinePy version 2, which is detailed here, and which, as we can see, is a very early alpha. However, having read up on this project, I've got high hopes it's going to work, so let's cross our fingers. And I would note, if you want the image for CinePy for version 2, what you do is to scroll down to the very bottom of its page, and there we are, there's an image available for download. Returning to the components, what we have here are a Raspberry Pi 4 8GB model, although a 4GB model also works, and later versions of CinePy use a Raspberry Pi 5. But uh, here this 8GB Raspberry Pi 4 that I currently have lying around should be fine, although do note I fitted this quite large heatsink because the CinePy software will overclock the Pi. Also here we have a Raspberry Pi high quality camera module, this I tested out in a previous video, it's been uh, waiting to do something ever since, and uh, under this dust cap we have a 7.9mm 12.3 megapixel Sony IMX477 sensor. And with a supplied C-mount adapter we can use C-mount lenses, what a surprise, and I'm going to be using here this particular C-mount lens which is often sold to go with uh, the Raspberry Pi high quality camera, this is a 16mm lens. Next, we need some kind of viewfinder and controls, and for this, CinePy version 2 is programmed to use this particular Pimeroni Hyperpixel 4 square high-res display for Raspberry Pi. What a great name for a product. And uh, as the name suggests, this is a square 4-inch display, and it's the only thing I've had to purchase for this build. So, let's uh, move these aside a second and bring in Stanley my knife and uh, open this up. Just on the top, I think, there we can just uh, flick through and hopefully open up. Very exciting. Always in a little bag. And there is a, well, there's a th this header to mount it properly on the Pi to raise it up. There's some standoffs as well. It's very exciting, this, isn't it? And in here, hopefully, is a non cracked display. And, oh, look, it's the back. It's the front. There it is. Nice little display, this. It's a 720 by 720 pixels, which is a reasonably high resolution given the 4 inch size. And do note, this comes in two models. And uh, specifically here we've got the touch model, which is the one you need for CinePy version 2, and this has model number PIM470. In terms of other parts, CinePy has to record its files somewhere, and for this we need some relatively fast USB 3 storage, and here I'm going to use this M.2 Caddy, which I've fitted with a crucial NVMe SSD. To go on location, we also need some kind of battery power, and here I'm going to use this power bank, a 10,000 milliamp hour power bank. I normally carry this on my travels to recharge my phone, but I'm sure it won't mind helping out in this project. 
Other than this, some mounting hardware will no doubt be required. I've been looking at various bits of mounting hardware I've got lying around. Maybe using these, don't know what look like, they might be useful. And also going to need a micro SD card. I've got one over here, here it is, a SanDisk Extreme Pro. Happens to be 64 gigabytes, but it doesn't have to be quite that big. And I've already downloaded the CinePy version two image from GitHub and imaged it to this card. And so the next thing to do is to take all of this hardware, including the uh, screen and the Pi and the uh, camera module, the uh, sensor, and we're going to do a desk test to see if this is all going to work. Well, life here is now very exciting, not least because I managed to mount this display on the Pi without uh, cracking it. Everything is mounted up, as you can see. Uh, just for a desk test, as I said earlier, I've got the SSD connected as well. And I've got the Pi connected to a standard Raspberry Pi adapter for this test rather than the battery bank. So let's do the really exciting thing of turning on the power. This is my first boot of this system. So I just have to lean back over here and press the power. There we go. And we will see what happens. There is power on the uh, SSD. That is good. Hopefully the Pi will come on. This is a first boot, it needs to sort itself out. It's probably gonna do a reboot as well. So we'll see what happens. Nothing yet, but uh, these are early days. Oh, that looked very encouraging. Came up, that's the reboot I imagine. So hopefully it'll come back again. Do you think it will? Oh yes, little LEDs are flashing. You can't see them. I'm keeping you in suspense here, but hopefully I want to show you this in real time, yes. I've even got it the right way up, that's amazing. We have got obviously a preview from our camera. If we move that around like that. And we have got controls, a record control. There's other controls here which can be flicked up and down. Oh yes, that's, uh, this is impressive. And uh, the lens obviously isn't focused on anything at the moment. There's the, uh, that's, that's the focus, this is the iris, isn't it? Let's try and, whoa, what can we look at? I should have set this up, shouldn't I? But uh, there's nothing to look at, Christopher. There must be something to look at. Can I look at me? Where am I? Is that me up there? Uh, what's the iris doing? Let's give ourselves a bit more light. Oh yes, there we are. Oh, there's just about me, isn't it? Just about me and can we get me into focus? Oh yes, there's a bit of me coming into focus. Wow, that's frightening, isn't it? Anyway, I think we've proved the principle that, uh, oh, you can see me talking. I think we've proved the principle that this thing works. That is impressive. So I think what I'm now going to do is to get it mounted up into something a bit more uh, permanent and, uh, and solid, and then we'll uh, see how it works more specifically and test it out shooting some footage on location. Greetings. Here I am back again. I've now constructed my CinePie rig, and I think it's come out rather well, actually. In fact, it's one of the most pleasing constructions I've ever put together involving a Raspberry Pi. And as you can see, what I've basically done is to make some plastic brackets to which everything is mounted. Specifically, I've been working with two mil ABS plastic sheet, this type of stuff, which I've been cutting with standing a knife and cementing together using this uh, liquid poly adhesive. And then everything is mounted and turned onto this uh, small rig aluminium bracket. I've already mounted a tripod adapter onto the base of this so we can mount this on well a tripod and if you're wondering about the uh, the holes in the middle the cavity in the middle of this thing the idea is we can take the ssd and it'll mount in like this and we can take the power bank the battery and that'll mount in like that as well and although at the moment this is a uh, slightly wobbly do not fear i'm going to take this bit of packing foam and put that in when i put the thing finally together Oh, and it's worth pointing out in some further tests I discovered that the SSD wasn't being recognized by CinePy. But the issue was it was formatted XFAT, and I've now reformatted NTFS, and everything is working fine. So I think it's time to show you that. It's time to put this on a tripod with the associated power and data leads. There we go. The camera's now moving very nicely on the tripod. It really sort of looks and feels like a camera now, doesn't it? And it's also on, as we can see at the back, the screen is active, the Pi is booted up, showing the CinePi display. And so what I think we'll now do is to point the camera at a test subject so we can take a closer look at its controls. And as we can see, the camera is currently pointed at a YouTube crate, and we've got controls along the bottom. So for example, we can alter the white balance here. We can go to a 
5,600 for daylight, although we're currently lit under tungsten, so we should go back to uh, 3,200. We can similarly alter the shutter, set frames per second. We can alter the ISO value, push that up if we want. To have a higher gain, let's take it back to a 400. We have got a recording control top right. Excuse my fingers keep coming in, but it's a touchscreen. It's the only way I can work it. And of course we can stop things recording as well, like that. Top left, we've got a guide for exposure based on the one on red cameras, I believe. If I just alter the iris on the lens, you can see that alters as we get a darker and lighter. Let's come back to uh, roughly where we were. We can also see on the screen here the resolution we're using, the format we're recording in. And if we want to know more about that, we can swipe like that and press the settings like that, where we can alter if we want the resolution, also the uh, compression. There we are, like that. We can clearly eject and format media, and we can shut down the system. And uh, the screen's flicking a little bit, does that now and then. We've had no problems with that, though, affecting recording. And if I just go back like that, we've also got here, if I can get it from this angle, there we are, we've got a clip browser. This shows everything that's been recorded on the system. You can't play clips here, but you can see what's been recorded. And if you're wondering, what are all these clips on this system? Well, this afternoon, I took the camera out for a location shoot just to test it out. And so what we're now going to do is to take a look at some of these clips. Greetings. Here we now are in Windows, where I've plugged in the SSD from the CinePi. Here are all the shots that I've taken. And basically what we have is a folder for each shot, inside of which is a DNG sequence. In case you're not aware, DNG is a digital negative file, a raw file. And what we've shot here are files with a 12-bit bit depth in a resolution of 2028 by 1080. And just to give you an idea of the amount of data this has created, I've recorded a total of 134 gigabytes of files, which equates to about 28.3 minutes at 25 frames a second. Or in other words, about 4.72 gigabytes a minute at 25 frames a second. Anyway, I've taken this footage, as you might have noticed already, into DaVinci Resolve. Here it is. Here's various shots I've taken with the, the CinePi. And uh, I've done a little bit of grading and work on them over here in the, in the color tab using the uh, camera raw section, where I've set to uh, do each clip individually. And then I've also put the clips onto the timeline. So we've got a number of clips like this, as you can see. And it's worth pointing out, I've got the clips to fill a 1920 by 1080 display by going down to real time and scaling like that. And I've set the scaling to crop. If it was set to project settings here, we'd have the slight bars top and bottom because the footage is 2028 by 1080. But by setting it to a crop, we get a full 1920 by 1080 frame. So let's go back to the start of the footage like that. And I'll control F to do a full screen and we will play. Here we go. I couldn't find a great deal to film, I have to admit, on a late afternoon in February. The light was all over the place, but there was a little bit of sunshine, quite bright sunshine here and there. And the shots have come out pretty well. Slightly soft. I've not done masses of post-processing on these shots. A little bit, of course, because it's raw footage. You're also do a little bit on, on raw footage. But they've not come out that badly, actually. I've got to remember here we're using the 16mm lens for the Raspberry Pi high quality camera, that is a telephoto lens, a bit difficult to focus. But these shots aren't bad. This is quite a nice, quite a pleasing composition, isn't it? Little duck going along there, which is always a good to see. It might be a moorhen, some kind of bird anyway, swimming across the water at the bottom of the frame. There it goes. Go on, little duck, you can do it. This is quite a nice shot. Got some highlights blown out here. Might be able to recover them. I've got 12-bit footage to work with, but uh, we will see. Little bird flying around there. Oh, another little bird there. Lots of little birds flying around. And uh, this was right at the end, or second last shot, I think. Almost no light left at all. I've not lost the colour in the sky here. It simply wasn't there by this time in the day. But still, quite a nice shot. I'm pleased with what's come out from the Cinepi. And uh, I did find some animals to perform. Here's some geese. Couldn't find any ducks to perform, other than the little one we saw, but no close-up ducks in these shots, sadly. But these geese look OK. Again, some slightly blown out highlights. Strange colour here because it was very, very strange light right at the end of the day. But again, I'm pleased with this shot. It's impressive what the Cinepi can do. And uh, this is the final shot I'm showing you. This is some lovely clouds reflected in water. This is probably the only shot from this shoot I might keep in stock. You never know when a background like this might come in handy.
But uh, anyway, this is the selection of footage I thought I'd show you shot using my Cinepie. Cinepie is a very impressive open source Raspberry Pi project, which reminds us that today a camera is basically a sensor and a lens connected to a computer and some storage. Even my basic rig running the early alpha software is very nice to use, and in my location shoot I was very impressed with the quality and brightness of the screen, which works well even in sunlight. Fairly obviously, the limitation of this particular build is the size of the sensor, which is a very small for a cinema camera, as well as the quality of the lens. This is a fairly cheap lens, it won't give us absolutely fantastic results, and it's also rather challenging to focus. However, the limitations of this particular build in no way detract from Cinepie itself, with later versions using higher specification, if more expensive, components. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.